So what is Victor Frankenstein's impulse for creating his creature, his humanoid? Well, it's melancholy. Melancholy in the way that Freud defines it in his famous 1919, or maybe 1917, I can't remember, his essay called Morning in Melancholia. I talk about this essay in relation to Scotty in Vertigo, but it pertains to Victor Frankenstein, this idea of melancholy. It also pertains to Professor Hobby in AI, and I'll mention that film from time to time in the course of this talk. Why does Victor create the creature? One way to account for it is to say that he is mourning the loss of his mother. Recall that Freud says that <clears throat> mourning is the work of taking the affection for someone who is lost and transferring it to someone who is present. And ultimately the work of mourning is healthy and takes one out of the despair that can often come with chronic grief and moves one toward mental health. In contrast, the person suffering from melancholy, as Freud defines it, is unable to make that transfer. Um, this person longs for the lost person or object intensely, chronically, and is unable to let go of that longing. And over time, that person grows to loathe him or her, their selves, because of the inability to move on, to use our cliché. Someone trapped in melancholia, then, in this regard, is static, in a limbo, unable to embrace the present with hope toward the future, but instead living retrospectively, always longing for something in the past that can never be recovered. That happens with Scotty. In Vertigo, he longs for Madeline Elster and cannot let go of that longing. Well, one could argue that Victor longs for his lost mother. She dies right before he goes to college. When he goes to university, after a very uh, brief time studying with professors, he engages in his own research, which takes him into graveyards uh, and other rather nasty places in hopes of overcoming death. Well, why would he want to overcome death? Uh, because he is so wounded by the death of his mother. So the impulse for creating the creature, I prefer creature over monster, is a, a hope for healing, a hope that, well, I can't bring my mother back. Um, death has taken her once and for all. But if I can overcome death, uh, then perhaps I can feel as, as if I'm not a victim of, of organic process. I want to transcend organicity. That's, I want to make a humanoid. If we see a humanoid as an artificially produced person, I want to make a humanoid that will overcome organicity. So melancholia is the impulse behind the creation of the creature. One could argue that the duplicity of Victor's melancholia is a way to account for the duplicity of the creature. On the one hand, Victor's melancholia inspires him to yearn for, as I said just a minute ago, transcendence, a desire to transcend the limits of matter to some sort of spiritual realm where he'll, he will achieve some godlike power. But in contrast to this desire for transcendence is also a desire to replicate um, his own ego, which is the opposite of a desire for transcendence. On the one hand, he says, I want to be like a god and I will have a race that will worship me. That's transcendence. But on the other hand, he says, I will be like a father, and I will have children who will be under my sway. Well, that's replication. That's the replication of ego. So this is what lends someone like the creature in Frankenstein the duplicity of, on the one hand, being a, a double uh, of, of Victor. Uh, to the point where at near the end of the novel, Mary Shelley's novel, they're, they're in some ways indistinguishable. Victor starts out as being in charge. Uh, he's the, the master of the situation, but by the end, the creature is in charge. Uh, Victor starts out pursuing the creature. By the end, the creature is pursuing him. 
uh, Victor um, is obviously an organic human with the ability to feel and think. Uh, by the end, the creature also has an ability to feel and think. Uh, Victor wants to get married to Elizabeth. Uh, that marriage obviously doesn't make it very long. Um, and the creature wants to get married as well. So, so there is that sense of replication in the creature. But also the creature is yearning for something more. He, he yearns to connect with an other, with, with others. Uh, he, he yearns to develop a kind of spiritual sensibility, which is manifested in his deep reading of, or his deep understanding of Milton's Paradise Lost, say, or Goethe's Faust. Um, he's, he's very curious. He's, he's very interested in abstract thought. He's very interested in moving beyond his ego to a larger understanding. So this is part of the ambiguity of the creature. Um, he, he seems on, in some ways to be more human than Victor insofar as he can feel with more intensity and think with more subtlety. But on the other hand, he is, we might say, morally inferior to Victor because he does commit murders. He kills children. We One could say, well, this is the only choice he has to get to his creator, but still he kills children. So we see this same sort of duplicity at play in AI. Professor Hobby is very much like Victor Frankenstein. He is melancholy. Why is he melancholy? Because he's lost his son. And he is in that Freudian um, melancholic state where he's able, not able to move forward. So what does he do? Well, he actually is quite literal about it. He creates a, a creature that looks just like his son. And David himself has that same sort of duplicity. Uh, on, on the one hand, he has a, a depth of feeling and yearning for his mother that is much more intense than any kind of feeling that Professor Hobby shows. But also at the same time, he, he, he's, he's, he's unsettling to Monica, um, his, his adopted mother, because he's not quite human. So here we come um, to a place where a useful term um, will need to be invoked, and that is uh, the idea of the um, uncanny valley. Uh, this is um, a term created by a robotics um, expert. Um, her, I, I, let me get let me get the name exactly right. Masashiro Mori. Masashiro Mori um, came up with this idea. Um, to measure the way we feel toward, well, he says robots, let's just say humanoids or artificially created um, beings. So in this regard, the creature of Frankenstein would, would, would fit in this category. When these humanoids are almost exactly like humans, but not quite, we have an unease toward them. They feel uncanny to us, meaning they feel familiar and unfamiliar at the same time. There's an eeriness there. But when these creatures become, these humanoids become exactly like humans, well, then we have positive feelings toward them. So I think that in the case of David, quite clearly, he sort of moves back and forth between almost human and therefore eerie to someone like Monica and fully human and not eerie at all. And we see the same with the, with the creature. Even though physically he doesn't look human in the least because of Victor's poor execution and putting him together, emotionally he, he moves back and forth between being very unsettling to people because he is angry and can be murderous and is murderous, but also he has a great depth of feeling which makes him behave almost exactly like a human, a noble human would. So what I've talked about, I've talked about melancholy as an impulse behind Victor and and Professor Hobby, and I've talked about how their melancholia is projected into their creations and how this gives their creations their duplicity and ultimately their irreducible ambiguity and to think about where they fall in the uncanny valley as a way to account for this ambiguity.